President Biden met with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Bali earlier today. It was the first time that the pair spoke face to face since Mr. Biden took office late last year. A highly anticipated meeting took place on the sidelines of the G20 summit, and it arrived amid rising tensions between the U.S. and China. Mr. Biden, for his part, said he had a, quote, clear and candid conversation with a Chinese leader uh, and that he believes that both sides gained ground in the discussions. I mean what I say and I say what I mean. So there's no misunderstanding. That's the biggest concern is I have is a misunderstanding about intentions or actions on each of our parts. So we went into, I look at my team, how long did that meeting last? Three and a half hours. So we covered an awful lot of territory. And, uh, and I must say that uh, he was as straightforward as he has been with me in the past. And I, I think that uh, we understand one another, which is the most important thing that can be done. CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Zhang joins us now from the White House. Uh, Weijia, welcome. Uh, key takeaways uh, of this meeting today with Joe Biden and President Xi Jinping. Uh, Tony, this was a critical meeting for both of these leaders, because even though they have such a long history of speaking with one another, spending an awful lot of time together, because foreign policy has always been um, in Mr. Biden's portfolio, of course, things are very different now, because this is the first meeting they've had since uh, Mr. Biden became president and the first meeting since Xi Jinping secured his third term, which makes him even uh, more powerful. And, of course, he has not been shy about localizing um, China's goals of becoming uh, a superpower even more than it already is. And so, um, you know, this meeting was always going to happen. It was just a matter of when. And the key takeaways are, I think, both came away with something. China, unlike the majority of countries in the world, did not publicly rebuke Russia for its invasion of Ukraine in the way that, you know, American allies certainly did. Um, and they were able to do that, at least, uh, you know, having them both recognize that this is a major threat, um, that, you know, provocations from Russia would be a disaster when it comes to nuclear war. Um, and the, the president, President Biden, that is, um, vocalized, again, the U.S.'s position, um, the One China position, which is very important to Xi Jinping, because it acknowledges his government as the government, while still allowing to have relationships with Taiwan. But I think that the aggression that we have seen toward Taiwan um, in recent months is a concern. And so that has, was also a, a big priority on the agenda. But as you mentioned, uh, President Biden says that, you know, they had a very good, frank conversation um, and that they were able to address some of the points where there is a lot of um, uh, tension, which is not only the relationship between uh, China and Taiwan, but also trade policies, also technology, also te uh, Chinese spying in the U.S. So, you know, of course, we don't have the detailed discussions, but they did cover a lot of ground from uh, what we understand. I mean, the, the meeting itself, Weijia, is very significant. Do you expect or has the White House addressed any actual changes, any things that will come from the meeting, uh, anything that, you know, we can actually report on uh, moving forward? So there weren't any major breakthroughs, but I do think that it was extremely important for these two to talk face to face, um, especially about what's happening uh, in the South China Sea with regard to China and Taiwan. Um, and Mr. Biden made clear that the U.S. would defend the island if it were to come to that. Now, they have really um, hesitated, I should say, the administration, uh, to say whether that means, you know, U.S. boots on the ground. Um, but short of that, they have uh, made clear that the U.S. would do whatever it could to defend Taiwan in the case that uh, China were to try to um, invade. And so I think the fact that they were able to have that conversation face-to-face -face was really important because it sent a strong message to Xi, um, especially with, you know, what's happening in Russia and Ukraine playing out parallel to this and whatever, um, whatever goals that he might have. And, of course, you know, the global economy is also um, a huge uh, 
topic of conversation. But in terms of any deliverables, um, we don't have any commitments from China. We don't have any updates as far as when, um, you know, they will change their zero COVID policy, for example, which has really um, affected the manufacturing um, and uh, global uh, economy. Yeah, and it was, since you mentioned COVID, Weijia, in the pictures of the gathering, both sides had masks on. There was some distance between them, a whole uh, display of flowers there separating them. So um, COVID very much a reality in the meeting still, uh, even as other people move on or try to live in a post-COVID world uh, or live with the virus as is the term of art these days. Uh, on, on the the oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, Xi Jinping is notoriously COVID conscious. In fact, that's the big reason why the two leaders have not met before, because he refused to leave um, China. And of course, Joe Biden was not going to go to China, which would have given him a huge upper hand. And so we always knew that they would meet at some point if COVID um, restrictions and, and mitigations uh, were in place and if, you know, the numbers, frankly, sort of leveled off, which, of course, we are in a different phase of the pandemic now. But you're absolutely right. Um, you know, everyone around them was still masked up. I'm sure that was a request uh, from the Chinese, although I don't know for certain. Very interesting. So looking ahead to the G20 summit, uh, which begins tomorrow, also in Bali there in Indonesia, what are the Biden administration's goals there? So this is why this meeting with Xi was so important, because, of course, I think top of mind will be um, the war in, in Russia and Ukraine and specifically, you know, the global impact of that. So for Xi to agree that, you know, Russia's actions um, are a threat, that they are uh, not appropriate, was a, a big point um, that— I think this White House wanted to make heading into those discussions. And aside from that, they will talk about the global economy, um, how the war is impacting prices, of course, not only here at home, but everywhere, and how that's contributing to global hunger. So, really, um, I think, you know, there will be a lot of conversations about potential solutions, what can be done. But I I'm not quite sure what um, uh, they'll be able to agree on, because we are talking about 20 countries, uh, and oftentimes they will have some sort of a joint agreement. So we'll wait to see what the conversations lead to. And another really big topic will be the climate. Yeah. Um, many of these leaders just attended COP27, which is a huge um, uh, climate summit. And, and I think that, you know, the president hopefully will get Xi to agree to more talks, which were halted, by the way, because um, in August, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi went to Taiwan. And after that, Chinese officials shut down conversations with their U.S. counterparts, including on climate. And, of course, China has such a huge carbon footprint um, that that will no doubt be a major topic of discussion to see if China is willing to change, um, willing to get back into talks to do their part. That is an essential conversation. Uh, Weijia Zhang, thank you. Sure.